Well, greetings and salutations, folks. I hope everyone is still doing well and welcome to, depending on wherever you may live or however you may look at your clock, a middle of the night or early morning bonus upload. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description below. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click that like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And folks, they really do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to this middle of the night or early morning bonus upload, shall we? Today's first of the very strange encounters I'm going to share with you. This happened in the town of Troy in Bradford County, PA, back in 2011, November 20th. A couple was driving along a rural stretch of road called Mud Creek Road when their attention was caught by what they first thought to be a naked man crawling across the road in front of them. This might have been considered very strange, but it gets stranger when they stop the vehicle. The couple stopped not far away, and although they couldn't make out many details in the glare of the headlight, it would become apparent that this was no human. At first, they couldn't much tell other than it was a vaguely humanoid shape, but they got a better look when this creature suddenly sprung into a crouched position, upright like a kangaroo. It then became quite apparent that this was not a human. What they saw was roughly humanoid in form. Very muscular, standing about five feet high with clawed arms held close to the body. An oversized head reminiscent that of a wolf with large black eyes set within it, topped with two bat-like ears and the whole body was covered with dark, wrinkly, black skin. It then fully stood up to extend its legs to show it was more like eight feet high, before lurching forward to fall onto all four. It was then that the creature whipped its head around and seemed to finally realize that it was being watched for the first time, upon which it displayed a look of surprise and panic, as if it had been caught doing something it shouldn't have been doing. It then took a tremendous leap over a high embankment to disappear into the darkened forest. Strangely enough, the witnesses would then say its legs were only slightly larger than broomsticks or about the size of a walking crane, but they were very long. All in all, they had the impression that they somehow caught it changing forms. The man even went as far to say he believed he witnessed a werewolf in the process of transformation. Well, if a hairy werewolf in transformation isn't strange enough for you, how about a little telepathic monster? A very strange account of a humanoid comes to us from Toronto, Canada in 78. Here within the dark confines of various networks and tunnels and caves under this sprawling metropolis. A 51-year-old man known, known only as Ernest had a strange and frightening encounter in August of 1978. Ernest states that he had been out searching the neighborhood for a missing kitten from a litter he had been raising with his wife when he stumbled across the tunnel entrance and decided to get a flashlight and investigate where it led, perhaps even to find his missing kitten in the process. He claims that he went about ten feet into the murky darkness and suddenly came across a creature that looked somewhat like a long and thin monkey 
about three feet high, with large teeth and covered in gray fur. The unsettling eyes which peered out of the darkness from dark, deep sockets were described as being bright orange and slanted. And, to make the whole ordeal even more horrific, he reported that the creature actually spoke to him. That night I saw a living, breathing nightmare that I will never forget, and it said, Go away, go away, in a hissing voice. Then it took off down the long tunnel off to the side. I got out of there as fast as I could, and I was trembling with fear. Ernest would later grudgingly tell his tale to the Toronto Sun newspaper of his frightening experience after being encouraged by friends to do so. He then refrained by giving his last name out of fear that he would be ridiculed. The staff of the Sun even went as far to accompany Ernest to the location of his strange sighting in March of 79. And they found that indeed there was an entrance to a cave at the end of a passageway between homes, which led into a narrow tunnel and dropped off into a gloomy sewer system below. When they investigated the tunnels, they didn't see any strange creature, but they did find a maimed carcass of a cat half buried in the ground. When sewer officials were questioned about what Ernest had perhaps seen, an employee gave a rather ominous statement. People who work on the surface just don't know what it's like down there. It's a whole different world. Who would have thought a few years ago that people would live in the sewers? And yet, that's what they found in New York a few years ago. I don't know what Ernest saw down there. I'll tell you one thing. If we could get in there, I sure as hell wouldn't go down alone. The then so-called Cabbage Town Tunnel Monster is truly a bizarre encounter. And no other such report like it has come out. And it's hard to say what this creature is, especially considering that it allegedly spoke. Concerning the witness himself, friends and family said he's honest and reliable, not prone to making tall tales. The Sun reporters who interviewed him said he seemed honest, scared, and reluctant to tell his tale. What did he see down there, if anything, we may never know. One idea of what the Cabbage Town Tunnel Monster could have been was not a tunnel dweller at all, but rather some sort of cryptid from above ground taking refuge in the tunnels. The region where it was sighted has long had accounts from natives of a small race of hairy humanoids that inhabited the area near waterways, and were called the Mimiguisi, and perhaps something like this could have found home down in the tunnel. We'll probably never know for sure if this hairy beast isn't strange enough. Then we have what is to come known as the Octo Squatch, back in the summer of 61. A 29-year-old truck driver named Aquermides Sanchez was driving along a mountain road in Vescue Mountains in Spain at around 11 at night, along with an unnamed companion on their way to the town of Porto del Bazar. As they rounded a bend, their headlights hit a bizarre and rather monstrous being standing upon an embankment nearby, which prompted the pair to stop their vehicle. When they peered through the darkness ahead of them, they claimed to see a hairy octopus which stood around four feet tall with glowing eyes and tentacle-like arms. The witnesses and the thing apparently sat there completely frozen and immobile for several minutes. Both parties probably just startled and scared as each other before Sanchez snapped out of it and slammed the accelerator which caused the weird apparition to scurry backwards away from the threat, after which Sanchez backed up and tried again, apparently intent on running it over. Interestingly enough, the otherworldly intruder refused to take off into the night, instead always just managing to avoid being hit, as if it were a game. Finally, the two men, neither who were willing to step out of the vehicle to investigate, drove off, to leave this being behind never to be seen again. 
June 3rd, 2018, a taxi cab dispatcher named Edgar Zays says one of his drivers had been driving a passenger home and had his bizarre encounter as he had been driving through Elizabethton, Tennessee. He says that the driver had not seen the creature, but the passenger had witnessed a kangaroo-like beast running alongside on its hind legs, and the report says of the incident. The female passenger in the taxi asked upon passing the spot where the car had swerved if the driver had seen it. When he told her he had not, she described the creature as something about two feet tall, running at a high speed across the road and only on its hind legs, and had the overall body shape of a kangaroo. She said the creature was running towards the woods. To the best of my knowledge and research, this is the first sighting of anything like this or around this area of Tennessee. There have, however, been other sightings of other cryptids ranging from the Birdman of Hampton to the Tennessee Wildman, and even several possible Sasquatch sightings, including a possible winged Bigfoot encounter. Quite strange, to be sure, but another report is maybe even weirder. In 1954, there is a report from a man who says that at the time, he had been working with his U.S. naval engineers at Zaragoza Air Force Base near Zaragoza, Spain, as a contractor refurbishing the NATO base. It was his first time in Spain, and at one point he took some of his off time to visit a historical monastery called the Monastero de Pedera, near the rural town of Nevalusa. He would meet up with a woman who offered to guide him around the area, and they set off on a hot August day. With the scenery proving to be so enchanting, the witness decided to stay another day, checking himself into a local inn. That evening, he decided to take a stroll around the rustic inn and its adjacent vineyard, finding his way down to a nearby stream, with only a flashlight in the moonlight to guide his way where he saw something run through the water around 50 feet away. He couldn't make out what the figure was at first, and sort of wrote it off as maybe an animal, but as he continued on his way, he began to hear strange sound emanating from the dark, which he described as sounding like a loud, guttural, yak, yak, yak. He climbed up over some rocks, trying to figure out where this otherworldly sound was coming from and says he came across an opening in the rock face that held within a grotto about 15 feet deep and littered with bones of small animals, which took on a rather sinister ambience in the dancing beam of his flashlight. He figured that it was probably a den of a fox or some other type of predator, and he was going to be on his way. And this is where it all gets quite bizarre. He says that this transpired. I continued on the trail until I heard the yak, yak, yak sound again. It was very close. I instantly stopped walking and started searching around me with my flashlight. Just then, some gravel landed on me and a loud yak, yak, yak sound was coming from above me. I quickly looked up and pointed the flashlight. There was a creature standing on a small rock ledge about 15 feet away, staring at me with yellow eyes reflecting back. It was screaming, yak, 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 in quick, constant rhythm. This was the most ghastly thing I had ever seen. It was standing on two legs and was about four to five feet tall. It was dark in color and had arms like a human. The face looked that of a lizard resembling an iguana. After a few seconds, it leapt off the ledge onto the trail swiftly running on two legs in the opposite direction. It was then that I noticed a long tail was moving away from me, and I quickly made my way back to the inn, and directly to my room. I laid in bed thinking about that creature the entire night. I was too terrified to look out my window, fearing that the thing had followed me back. Early the next morning, I checked out and drove back to Zaragoza, 
I have no proof of my experience other than my word. But I now believe that this was a reptilian cryptoid. Adding to all this bizarreness is what can only be described as some sort of vegetable-like humanoid. Certainly, one of the more downright bizarre cases comes to us from West Virginia. July of 68, a local man by the name of Jennings Frederick was out bow hunting in the rural backwoods, just outside of Fairmont, West Virginia. At some point, he allegedly heard a high-pitched, unearthly sound that he would describe as sounding like a recording running at an exaggerated speed. Curious, Jennings searched about for this sound. And this is when he would come across a very strange sight. There in the brush stood a seven-foot-tall semi-humanoid entity with exceedingly thin, almost skeletal frame, long ears, and stalk-like arms that were almost like tendrils and which were ended in slender, seven-inch-long fingers tipped with some sort of needles or thorns as well as suction cups. The whole of the creature was described as green and very plant-like in nature, as if it was part animal and part plant. The whole time Jennings watched it, making this reverberating, chattering sound all around me, and he suddenly realized that he could make out words within the alien noise, like glimpses of a meaning of white noise which he took to say, You need not fear me, I wish to communicate. I come as a friend. We know of you all, I come in peace. I wish medical assistance, I need your help. As Frederick stood there, wide-mouthed in bewilderment, the mysterious being reportedly suddenly lashed out with one of his stalk-like arms with blinding speed to wrap around him in an iron grip. The needles or thorns on its fingers then apparently pierced the startled man's skin and began to draw blood, but rather than the pain he found himself drawn to the thing's eyes, which seemed to rapidly switch back and forth from red to yellow in a hypnosis-like state that held him in thrall and dulled his senses. After about two minutes of this, this otherworldly plant monster reportedly let him go and took off in a sprint up a nearby embankment in the great 25-foot-long bounds, followed shortly by a deep, thundering noise that Frederick would later speculate to have been the sound of the creature's spaceship. For years, Mr. Frederick kept this story to himself out of fear of being ridiculed, but in 1976, he would relate it to a paranormal researcher named Gray Baker, who would then include it in his newspaper. The story would be brought to even greater attention when it was mentioned in the late Brad Steger's 1978 book of alien meetings. Was this an alien or some sort of cryptid? Whatever it was, the vegetable man of West Virginia is certainly one of the more bizarre encounters on record. Similar in some respects... We have another report. This one comes from Waverly, Kentucky. The witness, Bill Wolf and his family. The road they were on went straight on through the vast expanse of cornfields. And while the swaying stalks would have been eerie enough, it was when they went over a low hill that things got truly bizarre. As they went over the hill, they saw something go crawling or slithering across the road in front of them. It was somewhat humanoid in shape, around seven feet tall, very thin and long, and looked like something they described as a stalk of corn covered in tufts of what they thought was some kind of hair that grows on corn stalks. The outlandish beast then crawled its way across the road and disappeared into the cornfield on the other side. What was this bizarre creature? Was it some sort of abomination that just crawled from a parallel universe? Whatever it was, corn squatch was never seen again. Then there's a case of a witness who saw a huge human-like insect. This oddity comes from Madison County, Illinois. 
at the city of St. Jacob, where the witness claims to have encountered what he can only describe as some sort of gigantic insect. The anonymous witness states that he was driving along the highway around three in the morning when something out of this world had lumbered into the ambience of his headlights. The terrified witness said that he had pumped his brakes at the sight of it and described it as being seven feet tall, stick-like insect. He describes it as the following. An object appeared in my headlights on the right side, crossing the highway, looking like a giant walking stick with four legs. Its head turned as it ran and looked directly at me just before going out of the lighted view. It was red wood and moved in approximately one second or less across the whole lighted area of my headlights. When it turned to me, it had no face. Some cases of these strange one-off encounters come not from the ground, but from the air. Fayette County, Pennsylvania, March 18, 2012. An unidentified man claimed he was walking his dog through the rural area when his attention was drawn upwards by a strange whooshing sound. When he looked up to see what was causing it, he said he saw what he described as a dragon. It was reportedly about 22 feet long, with a wingspan of 18 feet wide, with smooth, reflective brownish red skin and topped by a reptilian head ringed by a cone-like structure with visible fangs. Strangest of all was the creature's mouth, a very ominous orange glow. As the terrified witness looked on, the flying monster unleashed a bellow like a foghorn and flew off into the night and seemingly off the face of the earth. 2013, a 32-year-old doctor named Marco Gassati was on a flight from Rome to Boston at the time. It was a rather uneventful flight at first, and 30,000 feet over the Atlantic is the last place you expect to run into a cryptid. But things got interesting, to say the least, when Gassati says that he was overcome by a sudden, overwhelming sense of dread and felt nauseous. He at first thought that it was some kind of abrupt panic attack, but looking around he could see the others sitting nearby seemed to be suffering from the same effects. This is where things get truly crazy. Gassati claims that he heard a loud, jolting thud on the window of the plane, which some others around him clearly heard as well. And when he looked out into the sky, he saw something from a horror film. There, fastened to the outside of the plane, was allegedly some sort of immense beetle-like insect with a metallic green body and large segmented eyes that was somehow able to maintain its grip onto the aircraft. He would say of what happened next. It had attached to the window with claw-like structures on its big black legs. There were hairs and hooks and some sort of adhesive pad that apparently helped the animal stay on the plane. Then it unfastened its leg from the glass and his green metallic body opened up. Two wings came out, I should say rolled out like a rug. They were translucent and I could see they were full of red veins. It looked like a tree branch or a leaf. The thing glided for about two seconds, then started flapping its wings slowly. It was incredibly slow, not like a regular insect, where you can't even see the shape of the wings. His eyes stared at us, looked like a red flashlight. After a few moments, the bizarre creature was gone. It would turn out that ten other people had seen it as well. This next encounter comes to us from a police officer from Mercerville, New Jersey. The unidentified officer claimed that he'd been off duty and sitting on his back porch when he looked to the sky and saw quite a bizarre sight. 
in the form of a dark gray snake-like creature flying through the air on two sets of wings. A regular one and another set of smaller wings at the end of its body. And he also mentioned that it had no discernible head. The witness says of the very strange snake bird, I couldn't see a beak either. It didn't have legs or feet. It was about ten feet long and thin, like a snake. Its wings were very thin and long, and moved like an eel or a snake. It moved through the air like a sea creature would move through the water. I'm familiar with anything that moves around us in our natural habitat. This was not anything earthly. All right, guys. So on that last experience, I'm really not sure what that could be. Um, I know that there's been, there was an upload that I talked about or that I had done and discussed a cryptid that really had a very similar, uh, kind of resemblance to what we just talked about or what I just shared, but I'm not sure if any of you guys are familiar. There is a cryptid called the Snallygaster, S-N-A-L-L-Y-G-A-S-T-E-R. The Snallygaster is a bird-slash-reptile chimera originating in the superstitions of early German immigrants later combined with sensationalistic newspaper reports of the monster. Early sightings associate the Snallygaster in Frederick County, Maryland, especially the areas of South Mountain and Middletown Valley. Later reports would expand on sightings encompassing an area to include Central Maryland, Washington, D.C., and the metro area. 18th century, the area of Frederick County, Maryland, was settled by German immigrants beginning in the 1730s. Early accounts describe the community being terrorized by a monster called the Schnell, Schneller Geist, Schneller Geist, meaning quick ghost in German. The earliest incantations of this creature mixed the half bird features of a siren with the nightmarish features of demons and ghouls. The Snallygaster was described as half reptile, half bird, having a metallic beak lined with razor sharp teeth. Occasionally, alongside octopus like tentacles, the Snallygaster was rumored to swoop silently from the sky and pick up and carry off its victims. The earliest stories claim that the monster sucked the blood from its victims, seven pointed stars, which reputedly kept the Snallygaster at bay can still be seen painted on local barns in the region. 19th century, it has been suggested, the legend was resurrected in the 19th century to frighten freed enslaved people. And it goes to the 20th, pretty much the, the similar same kind of stuff. But let's jump into the 21st century. The Snallygaster appears as a Boss Fight in Blair Witch Volume 2, The Legend of Coffin Rock, which takes place in 1886. In 2008, author Patrick Boyton published a history of the Snallygaster entitled, entitled Snallygaster, The Lost Legend of Frederick County. 2011, the annual Beer Festival. A beastly beer jamboree called the Snallygaster started in D.C. 2017 edition of J.K. Rollins, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, incorporated the Snallygaster into her Harry Potter universe. It is described as part bird, part reptile, relative to Okami, with serrated steel fangs, bulletproof hide, and natural sense of curiosity. The creature called the Snallygaster appears. 2008 Bethesda game Fallout 76. It bears a little resemblance to the creature of legend and is described in the game as a failed genetic experiment.
Now that blessing of information was given to us by Wikipedia, <laughs> which we all know how Wikipedia is. This, my friends, is a little better, uh, better information though. For years, the Snelly Gaster lived only in the pages of folklore until 1909 when stories of a beast began to appear in newspapers. Encounters between local residents and a winged creature in February and March of 1909 described it as having enormous wings, a long pointed bill, hooks or claws like steel hooks, and an eye in the center of its forehead. Further, it was said to screech like a locomotive whistle. February 1909 article claimed that a man had been seized by this winged creature, which proceeded to sink its teeth into his juggler, drain the blood from his body before dropping him along a hillside. The story was carried prominently in Middletown, Maryland Valley Register and soon spread far and wide, so much so that the Smithsonian Institute offered a reward for its hide in United States President Theodore Roosevelt reportedly considering postponing an international trip to go hunt the beast personally. In early issues, the flying beast seemed to be everywhere at once. In New Jersey, it was reported that its footprints were discovered in the snow. In West Virginia, it was said that the flying beast almost caught a woman near Scrabble, was found roosting in a farmer's barn, and laid an egg the size of a barrel near Sharpsburg. A man in Castown, Ohio, wrote a letter to the Valley Register telling of a strange creature that flew over his area, making terrible screeching noises. He described it as having two enormous wings, a large horny head, and a tail 20 feet long. It was first sighted in Maryland by a man who operated a brick-burning kiln near Cumberland spied near the kiln sleeping. It emitted a blood-curdling scream, and when it awoke angrily, it flew away. It also was sighted near Hagerstown, south of Middleton, at Lover's Leap, and seen flying over the mountains between Gaplin and Burkittsville, where it was reported to have laid another very large egg. The last sighting in Frederick County occurred in 1909 in March. Three men fought the creature outside of a railroad station, for nearly an hour and a half before chasing it into the woods of Carroll County. Afterward, there were no more sightings of this mysterious creature for the next 23 years, at which time it was once again appeared in Frederick County, Maryland. The first report said the bird was seen just below South Mountain in Washington. At the time, it was surmised that its life expectancy of the Snelly Gaster was about 20 years. The new sighting were from its offspring in 1909. At this time, the Middleton Valley Register requested that local residents who spied the creatures should provide as accurate and detailed description as possible for scientific purposes. Two residents soon reported having seen it in Braddock Heights, flying about 25 feet overhead, confirming the descriptions published previously in the week. The next thing I heard of the Snelly Gaster was that it had died in Washington County when a moonshine fume still overcame it, fell from the sky into a 2,000-gallon vat of alcohol, according to the story. Revenue agents soon arrived, destroyed both the beast, vat, and carcass. Interesting. So, I have heard where this creature has actually known to uh, supposedly feud with a I think it was a black dog um in Maryland if I'm not mistaken um I want to say yeah but I don't remember where I heard that maybe but how cool is it that Good old Teddy Roosevelt wanted to go and hunt the creature down himself. Teddy Roosevelt, an American president and a cryptozoologist. <laughs> Just awesome. Awesome, awesome. I love the Roosevelt family even more now. Anyway, guys, thank you for supporting the channel. 
your support is what keeps this channel growing and going and honestly what gives people a chance to share their experiences, ideas, and theories, judgment, and ridicule free, simply treated with the respect that we all deserve. Thank you. Everyone, please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, our pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real, they are out there, and they are dangerous. Share this information with the people you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Till next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for answers, and God bless.